It has been 13 years since we got the last main installment of Kingdom Hearts. 13 years for something that wasn't a side story, subplot, or mobile game. When the game was revealed, I was first in disbelief. A game that we have been waiting years for, a game that become the stuff of legend and memes, was finally actually becoming a real game. After I had gotten over my disbelief, I was amped to learn more about the game. Fast forward to January 25th and Kingdom Hearts 3 was upon us. Let's see if it lives up to the hype and was worth the long wait. What is happening, Matt Made here giving my review of Kingdom Hearts 3 on PS4. Kingdom Hearts 3 continues the Xehanort saga. He's still the bad guy saying things like something something darkness, something something Kingdom Hearts. And you still follow Sora, Donald, and Goofy going on adventures and getting stronger. The story is still as convoluted and complex as you remember. And there are a few more plot points added to the game. Kingdom Hearts 3 pulls from every installment in the series and tries its best to bring a player back up to speed or fill them in if they have not played every game in the series. Which includes the mobile games. There is so much that even as you play the game, there are times where you go, oh this was a thing wasn't it? The story definitely has its twists and turns. They also do something really, really petty in the beginning and that almost made me turn off the game right then and there. Those who have played a Kingdom Hearts game will find the controls welcoming as not much has changed. You still have your attack, magic, items, and link. As well as the ability to have shortcuts for your favorite moves, as this is an action RPG. You still have your MP gauge and your standard Keyblade attacks. As you progress and level up, you'll gain access to new abilities and moves, making the combat deeper and more varied. In this installment, everything is thrown at you pretty much all at once. You're able to use most of your abilities from the start, which can be quite overwhelming. You do get more magic and abilities, but the bulk of the ones you'll use, you start off the game with. You have your standard 4 hit combo, which deals pretty good damage, your magic, and you start off being able to use the attraction rides. On top of those, each Keyblade has a second or even third form that you can access during combos. On top of that, by using the same magic repeatedly, you get access to Grand Magic, which is a stronger version of the magic that you used. Attraction rides are all bright, powerful, and fun. They can wipe out enemies fairly quickly. Throughout my playthrough, I was able to use the attraction rides so much that I just stopped trying to get them. Even then, I would sometimes accidentally trigger the ride and have to cancel it. While in the attraction rides, you can still take damage and be killed which is odd when considering you're on a carousel or in a spinning teacup, but makes sense from a balance standpoint. The different forms of the Keyblades you get are all cool and interesting. The Kingdom Key doesn't change form, however you do get access to new attacks and a type of special. Aside from that, each key has a different form and different attributes. The Yo-Yo is probably my favorite of the Keyblade transformations, as its range and strength makes fights a lot easier. Gaining access to these forms is easy as well. Just hit an enemy until you get the prompt, press a button, and then BAM! More power at your fingertips. The Keyblades also have levels, requiring you to gather materials and synthesize them in order to make each one stronger. The magic works the same as it always has. You get your starting magic, and as you progress you get stronger spells, and as I said before, you can cast grand magic by casting the same spell repeatedly. This doesn't cost any MP and it's pretty much a free powerful spell. So for instance, if you keep casting fire, your grand match could be Fira, and Fira be Faraga. And if you cast Faraga repeatedly, you'd be able to cast Faraza. This allows you to use stronger magic and body both heartless and bosses alike. Movement in the game is fluid and intuitive. Every movement option from past Kingdom Hearts games is back and has been retooled. Usually, this will make for a mess of a game. However, being able to go into flow motion and use different attacks, as well as being able to run straight up walls in order to get to enemies, is pretty straightforward and simple. You can swing around poles, bounce off walls, and dash through the air in order to get to hitting nooks and crannies, or dodge around enemies to avoid damage. With all of these tools, you'll find yourself wondering what the best plan of attack is, and if you need to use everything in Sora's toolkit. Pro tip, you don't. Playing the game your way and in a way that feels comfortable is possible and easy. Don't like the Keyblade morphs? Don't do them. 
Don't like the attractions? Don't use them. You can play the game like it's Kingdom Hearts 2 and be perfectly fine. That's not to say the new mechanics don't make battles easier or more fun, just that you are given the option of how you want to proceed through the game. The visuals of each world are stunning. Having to wait 13 years for the game to look like this is well worth it. Sora, Donald, Goofy, and the rest of the Kingdom Hearts cast are all in their HD glory. Each world you visit and alley you creep in is painstakingly detailed and laid out. The Pirates world is vast with its different aisles. The Frozen world is full of icy ponds and snow-filled caves. Every minute detail was covered, and its small touches will really get to you. Sora's new design is an interesting and nice change. His classic duds are cool and all, but as he has aged, I'm glad to see that his and others' wardrobes grew and altered. Donald and Goofy's designs haven't changed a bit, which is to be expected as they are Disney characters and we all know how our Disney overlords can be. They do at least have varied expressions and Donald seems to be always done with Sora's shit, no matter what they're doing. The sound design in Kingdom Hearts 3 is simply amazing. I love the opening song and it really fits with the game. Now it's no simple and clean, but that song was and always will be the song to define Kingdom Hearts, and I'll fight to the death over that. Each world has tunes from its respective franchises that start to play when you enter. The tunes also lightly play while you're roaming around and exploring. They really help set the tone of the world, and the score even picks up when you get into battles. The soundtrack is so impressive that Square had to issue a notice to streamers that they cannot stream the game just to listen to the soundtrack. Which is pretty funny, but also understandable. That's how good it is. Now, the game does feel a bit easy. Very few times did I feel like, oh shit, I might die here. Usually I will whip out my keyblade and just go ham on enemies and bosses. Even if your health gets low, you're able to go into rage form. A form that gives you all your health back and increases your damage, which really makes the game a breeze. Now I did play on standard, however I can't see how proud mode would offer much more of a challenge. The game also feels a bit too short. Once I got to the ending, I was like, this is amazing and all, but where's the rest? The game does not skirt around or give you filler, aside from the Wendy Pooh world. His world always sucks. Always. Other than that, every world is straight to the point. There are other things to do in each world such as looking for the Mickey symbols and fighting hidden bosses, however the main story is fairly short and linear. Kingdom Hearts 3 has so much going for it, condensing it down into this review was difficult. Many of the mechanics and worlds need to be experienced in order to be fully appreciated. Going through this game was a blast, and you'll find yourself going through the story multiple times with a big stupid grin on your face. If you haven't played a Kingdom Hearts game before, then this may not be the best jumping on point, but the game tries its best to bring you up to speed and fill you in. If you have played one or two Kingdom Hearts games, the cutscenes are a refresher and will quickly pull you into a nostalgia trip. If you're on the fence, there's only one thing I can say. The wait was definitely worth it. Have you played Kingdom Hearts 3? If so, what are your thoughts on the game? No spoilers for those who haven't played it yet. And don't forget, if you're a fan of gaming, consider striking that subscribe button and hitting the bell. This is Matt Made, and I will see you tomorrow.